Yo, what's up, YouTube fam? Welcome back to my channel. It has been four months since I got my car, but I haven't done any review video, so let's get it done. If you don't know, I switched from an V6 all-wheel drive Charger GT to Daytona RT. I'll do a separate comparison video between both of those, but yeah, for now, let's talk about the Daytona. Compared to a usual RT, RT Daytona last call edition takes things to another level. Under the hood, you've got powerful 5.7 liter V8 Hemi engine, churning out an impressive 375 horsepower and 395 pound feet of torque. It's not as wild as a 392, but don't underestimate this beast. It still packs a punch and provides a plenty of power for thrilling acceleration and pumping driving experience. So this Daytona comes with an LED headlight instead of the HID lamp that they gave and it's equipped with an adaptive cruise control as well. Visually, the RT Daytona Last Call Edition is an absolute head turner. These charges come with a decal on the hood and a Daytona badging in the front and another Daytona decal in the back. So the Daytona Edition also has 20 by 9 inch low gloss granite crystal wheels and they look pretty sick with this combination. So the only downside for this is the tires. They are 245-45 R20 and they are pretty small for this vehicle. 275 would have been much better. It comes with satin black one piece performance spoiler along with the Daytona decal and the combination looks sick. It comes with a satin black charger badge as well. They should have blacked out the Dodge logo as well but they didn't. They do have blacked out mirror caps along with blind spot monitoring and a courtesy lamp as well as heated mirrors as well. These are the decals that you get in the Daytona package. A front Hemi decal, a blacked out roof and a rear Daytona decal and a performance spoiler. I don't mind the roof spoiler, I installed it by myself and also don't mind the rear diffuser, I also installed it by myself. Did you get rear parking sensors and a functional vent in the back to get that air pumping? Most of the 5.7s come with the 4 inch tips and the Daytona also comes with the 4 inch tips as well. It would have been much nicer with 5 inch. So this packs 375 horsepower and 395 pound feet of torque and it's pretty good for a daily car. So with the Daytona package you get a Mopar cold air intake and it makes your car sound way unique when compared to a regular RT. I'm gonna put some sound clips in the end so make sure you check this out. You also got the last call badge and it makes car feel unique when compared to the others. Let's talk about the interior now. The door panel has a leather material as well as some soft touch material and they look pretty good. You do have memory seat adjustments as well along with the Daytona package. And the front two windows are power windows. You also have a couple of spaces to put some items in there. So the Daytona package also comes with the aluminium pedals. As for the seats, they are both ventilated and heated and you do have a Daytona logo on that. And these seats are made up of uh, Napa leather and Alcantara material, like a suede material. These seats hold you perfectly when swerving around as well. So the speedometer looks like an old school muzzle car and it really looks good and the steering wheel is completely leather and it's heated as well you do get uh, adaptive cruise control and your cv controls as well so you got sports mode super track pack lane departure traction control and park sense as well and you do have some knobs for climate control usually there'll be a charger here but instead for the daytona you get a daytona badge here which makes it more unique. The interior panels kind of looks like a brushed aluminium which stands out when compared to the other RT models or any other charger. So you have an 8-speed automatic transmission and you do have 
a placeholder for your phones, keys and two cup holders as well. Speaking of the back seats, you can fit three people there and you have a separator with illuminated cup holders. Different cup holders are illuminated as well. One thing is for sure, you have uh, enough room to fit five people in this car. Also, you got your AC vents and your two USB cables as well. So this is how it looks from the back. It looks pretty sick. The best thing about this car is its trunk space. It's really big. You can fit a lot of luggage in that. You can easily put two 30 kg bags in this. So I forgot to mention about the sunroof. So that's an optional thing that you can buy separately. So the cluster panel has a lot of features in it. You can check your tire pressure, 0 to 100 timers, as well as your oil temperature, the G-forces, and the lane departure system, and the mileage, etc. You also have a lot of options to check the oil temperature, coolant temperature, etc. And yeah, these are the options that you get generally. You got your trunk release and your ambient light settings and your headlight settings as well. So this is the climate control where you can adjust whatever options you want. The navigation is pretty reliable as well. The satellite works pretty good. So let's check the performance pages. So if you click on performance control, you can set up all different kinds, kinds of modes. For example, the default setup, the sport mode and the launch control as well so you do have different options to so that you can customize whatever you want for sport mode i've put everything in sport and but for the default setup i've kept everything in normal and yeah the temperature adjustment can be done in the screen as well as using the knobs as well so previously we checked performance control now let's check performance pages so the performance pages will give you live analytics of the car for example the torque the power that it makes and the g-forces and whole bunch of other other gadgets as well <laughs> So if you were to turn on the sports mode, just click on sport button and then you would see something like this. The traction control is in sport and you see a green flag on the top. So every time you press the sport button, it toggles the mode. So you can turn off your traction using that button and then you can also switch off a bunch of controls using all these buttons. Talking about the price, this car as it's optioned at 63,000 Canadian dollars excluding the tax it's completely loaded so that's the reason the cost is a bit higher but yeah switching over from a v6 charger to a v8 it's it's completely worth it the driving experience is way different from what you get while driving a v6 charger so I would say it's totally worth it and this is the last year for Dodge Charger and Challenger so if you want to get hands on one this is it please like share subscribe and comment any questions that you guys have thank you have a good one bye